Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, to our friends in the Philippines. I am Eric Elnar of the Philippine Trade and Investment Center here in Los Angeles. I am joined here um, today by our other Philippine Trade and Investment Centers in San Francisco, headed by Ms. Celine Layug, uh, in New York, headed by um, Special Trade Representative Nick Bautista, and in Washington, D.C., headed by Commercial Counselor Raymond Bata. Um, this event is um, a webinar on Trabajo, Negocio, Kabuhayan, um, focusing on franchise investment opportunities in the Philippines. This is co-organized with the Philippine Franchise Association and co-presented by all our PTIC offices in the U.S. and as well as our consulates general and um, Philippine Embassy in Washington, D.C. Now, um, to give an introduction to our keynote speaker, it is with great honor that I introduce um, her to give her work on remarks. She is one of the most prominent names in the Philippine franchising sector um, and is currently the Vice Chairman of the Philippine Franchise Association. In addition to that, um, she holds key positions in various organizations, such as the current Chairman of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, the Vice Chairman of the Philippine Retailers Association, and the Vice Chair of Philippine Phoenix Publishing Group. Recognized as the mother of Philippine franchising, our guest speaker is behind the success of some big brands in franchising such as Potato Corner, the Generics Pharmacy, Bench, Pen Shop, Turk Shawarma, among others. She is also a recipient of numerous prestigious awards. Ladies and gentlemen, please give our warmest welcome to Ms. Mada Alegria Bing Tibalim Hoko. Ms. Bing, good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. And good evening. Thank you for the kind introduction, Eric. Hope you're all doing well. On behalf of the Philippine Franchise Association Board of Trustees and Officers, I would like to welcome our Kababayans in the U.S. to this How to Invest in the Right Franchise Seminar. Thank you to our partners, the Philippine Trade and investment centers in the U.S. for making this happen. Our sincerest gratitude to Commercial Counselor Raymond Batak, Trade Representative Eric Elnar, Trade Representative Celine Layug, and Special Trade Representative Nick Bautista. The global impact of COVID-19 has been unprecedented and difficult to say the least, but now that the Philippines is gradually easing lockdown restrictions, the country is poised for a strong recovery. The government is making sure by releasing several stimulus packages aimed at creating jobs and helping MSMEs. Meanwhile, our Chairman Emeritus, Sami Lim, also known as the father of Philippine franchising, foresees another golden age of Philippine franchising in 2021 to 2025. As Linda Rottenberg from the U.S., a businesswoman from the U.S. and an author said, when economy is down, entrepreneurs go up. And this has been proven in, the, in 1997, we had the financial crisis wherein the dollars went from 21 to 37 in just a year's time. And many of them that uh, pulled money together, they were retrenched or retired, they put their money together and they opened a Jollibee. And do you know now how many Jollibees they have? Several, maybe eight, because each one of them got their own. And now, pag golf, golf na lang sila. They did not go into any other business, but in franchising, different brands. Okay, in 2008, 
after the financial crisis in the U.S., that was when they went to Potato Corner to Joe Magsaysay -Sai to say, can I bring Potato Corner to the U.S.? So Joe Mag went to the U.S. and you know what the consultants in the U.S. told him? No way will they buy uh, French fries or Potato Corner because French fries are free in the U.S. But then he consulted with us and my suggestion to him is go for it because there's really a lot of opportunity for concepts like Potato Corner, but you must do it right from the start. And you know now Potato Corner is global. I hope you are one of those that got one, but there's still time. Uh, Kat is going to present about it. Uh, and also, why that is so here in the Philippines is because there are many OFWs coming back. There will be many that will be retired also. So, um, to tell you more about franchising is uh, Chris Lim. He is the son of Sammy Lim. He will explain at length and he will feature a number of brands for your consideration. The purpose of this seminar, after all, is not just to encourage our attendees to become entrepreneurs via franchising, but also to educate the public on wise franchise investment. So I invite you to stay with us and explore the world of franchising. Who knows, this could be the start of something big for you. Thank you and mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you very much, Ms. Bing, for your welcome remarks. Now, um, I turn over the floor to the next um, speaker. He is the CEO of Francorp Philippines, the Philippines' largest franchise development consultancy and president of U Franchise, the Philippines' largest franchise matching company. He is a director for ASEAN of the Philippine Franchising Association and is a co-author of the 12 Strategies of Franchising, the first fran franchising book featuring 25 Filipino franchise brands. He is also the co-founder and CEO of Zoom Love Digital, a digital marketing consultancy aimed at helping entrepreneurs make the most out of digital marketing. He graduated with distinction honors in strategy and innovation from Oxford University and spent over a decade growing brands globally as senior global manager for Unilever based in London, Bangkok, Shanghai, Manila, and Cebu. A multi-awarded marketer, he won the Young Market, Market Masters Award by Mansmith and Fielders and received the much coveted Agora Award for Entrepreneurship. Actually, Chris and I go um, way back to our days promoting Philippine franchises in Myanmar and the rest of Southeast Asia when I was posted in Thailand. And anyway, um, without further ado, may I give the floor to Mr. Chris Lee. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, good good morning. Um, well, hope hope everyone's okay. Um, good afternoon, good evening to those in the U.S. Um, today, I really just wanted to spend a few minutes uh, talking about how to invest in the right franchise, um, because I guess that's that's something we're all looking at right now. And you know, we we do a lot of this, as Eric just said. You know, we do a lot of these sessions around the world, and. Even in the Philippines, we do it very often. In fact, we're doing one tomorrow and another one next week. And what unites everyone who joins these events is this simple quote. The idea that if you don't build your dreams, someone will hire you to build theirs. So this really is the entrepreneurship dream. The idea of being your own boss, of being able to run your own thing, of being able to run your own business. And the fact that if I'm just going to spend the whole night working, if I'm going to spend until midnight working, I might as well be building my dream, something that I can pass on to my children. Now, the reason people have been getting into franchising is really simple. It's because of the success rate. You know, if you start your own business, which a lot of people are looking at now, given the, given the possible global recession or 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 the possible unemployment looming. A lot of people are looking at starting their own business. But one thing from the Philippine Franchise Association we caution is, if you do start your own business, 
your chance of success is just about 25%. Versus if you start actually a franchise based on a USAID study, the success rates at over 90%. That's why I have good news and bad news to everyone here. The bad news. Well, I'll start with the good news. The good news is that there's about 1,800 franchise brands to choose from in the Philippines. And this spans food, service, retail. So, so what yung isipin, don't think that, that franchising is just all about food. You know, you could get into services, you could get into education, you could get into retail. Um, franchising spans so many different sectors. But the bad news is that you have 1,800 brands to choose from. There's a lot of brands in the Philippines. In fact, one, one, we're one of the largest franchise markets in Asia, maybe number eight largest in the entire world. And so it's important to learn how to choose the right ones. Now, let me start first with a very basic definition of franchising. Um, franchising really is duplicating the success of a successful business. So when you get into franchising, start with that. Start with looking for a successful business. Because all you're doing is duplicating what they're doing. Day in and day out, their systems, their procedures, you're just repeating it. And the beauty of franchising is this. You're in a business for yourself, not by yourself. If there are business owners listening now, I know sometimes if you have problems, it can be lonely. You try to ask for help from family, from friends, and they all try to help, but you know they don't fully understand what you're going through. The beauty of franchising is that you're able to ask for help from the franchisor, and they would probably know exactly what you're going through. They would probably know exactly, and they probably would have solved the same issues you had long ago. So they are here to help you. Now, very important are the elements of a franchise. And, and, and there are really five key elements. First is the use of the name. So, so the brand, the logo, the mascots, the use of the system. So the franchisor gives you the use of the systems and procedures, the operations manual. You know, usually that's about a five, 600 page document, the products, the marketing, the store designs, merchandising, ongoing support. So the franchisor, as we said, it's about duplicating the success of a business. They give you this on day one. Imagine if you get a franchise of a Jollibee, the 30, 40 years, 50 years of experience, that all the trial and errors, things that they fix, you get it from day one. But of course, beyond, beyond that, you have to, of course, as a franchisee, give your money, your time, and your people. First, let's talk about money. As a franchisee, you, you pay a franchise fee. This is usually a fixed fee um, paid up front. Uh, then you get, this is really for the training, for the support that you get as you're opening it up. Then you, of course, put in the capital. Then you have royalty. The royalty typically is a percentage of sales. So it's something that you have to pay monthly as a percentage of sales. Then you have the marketing campaigns, the store designs, the merchandising, and the ongoing support sorry, the, the local ad fees, and, 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 and you do buy products from the franchisor. Beyond, the, beyond these fees that you pay, you also have your time, of course. Especially for, for those in the US, franchises are not just looking for money, they're actually looking for your time, to invest your time and management capabilities, or if not, you know, your organization, your partner's organization abilities, they want to know that you are on top of the business. It's not that you have to be cooking the food, it's not that you have to be in the office 24 seven, but they need to feel that you are on top of the business. You know what's happening, you are leading and guiding your, your team. Now, I've talked a bit about the benefits of franchising. You know, we, we talk about the strong brand name, the proven systems, the solid marketing and promotions, but something like product research and development, something I haven't touched on. The beauty of franchising is because you're part of a whole system. You're part of a bigger system. So you do get the product research development. So imagine if you open one kiosk selling coconut juice. There's not much, you know, with one, with one store, you can't really do much product research and development. 
But if you're part of a system of 100, 1,000 stores, then you could actually create new products easily. The franchisor develops this for you. And of course, another thing is the experience and support. So, so the support that they give and the experience that they give. But I highlighted the last thing here, which is profit potential. Very critical to franchising is you get the profit potential, which is predictable through control systems. So the beauty of franchising is if you open a franchise tomorrow, you say you want to locate in the ground floor or the second floor of a mall, the franchisor can actually tell you that they have, can look at other stores that they have in similar locations and tell you at least what, how those, how profitable those locations are. So you're not guessing, you're actually using based on existing stores. So that's the beauty of franchising. There is a bit of profit potential and you could predict this. Now, no franchisee can promise you profit, but at least they can help you and guide you in terms of predicting what the right profits are. Now, a few things, five questions to ask the franchisor. So, so it, this is all about how to invest in the right franchise. I think the first thing you need to choose uh, to, to, to ask is, why do customers choose their brand versus others? So as you're going through your franchise journey, as you're going through about 1,800 different brands, what we want to make sure is you start narrowing that down easily. You should just be exploring three to five brands maximum um, instead of looking at hundreds of brands. So look at why do customers choose them? In fact, you should look at why do you choose them? Do you actually enjoy that brand? And of course, ask about what support do you give the franchisees? And the support isn't just upfront. If the only support they give you is they give you the product and they give you the design, that's not franchising. They're just selling you something. They should be giving you support ongoing. You know, who do you call? If, if after two months of operating, who do you call? In fact, ask them how often will they be visiting your stores? Because, because that's a kind of support that, 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 that can help propel your business. Of course, ask the financial profitability and payback period. So if you invested 1 million pesos, how long before you get that back? And franchise source will probably give this to you, but do also talk to their franchisees or do look at some of their locations to do your own, to do your own um, profit, profitability projections. Of course, you do have to ask what locations work best for them. And also ask, are they PFA members? Did Frank Corp or a professional develop their franchise program? This is important because franchising is a win-win partnership. If the brand just started franchising last week because the owner just decided they wanted to sell a franchise, you're not too sure how committed they are. But if they are a PFA member, they had to go through a rigorous screening process. So they're, an uh, they're, they're a member of the Philippine Franchise Association. As, as all the brands you'll hear from today are, you know that actually they went through a rigorous system and they're very serious about franchising. Or if you know that a professional developed their franchise program, you know that they're serious about this and they've invested money preparing for it. But I've talked a bit about what to ask the franchisor. I think very important as well is to what to ask yourself. Because franchising, though it fits a lot of people, it doesn't fit all people. A few things to ask yourself before you get into franchising, as well as to help you narrow down that 1,800 brands to maybe three to five. One is how much are you willing to invest? You know, are you willing to invest a million pesos, five million or 10 million? Here, very critical is don't invest your entire life saving into one franchise. As, as any investment expert will say, make sure you diversify. So do invest some, uh, uh, an amount of your savings and do have a buffer fund. Because if someone says the investment's about 500,000 pesos, do know that business can go up and down. So sometimes you need a bit of buffer fund to, to be able to support you during the lows of a business. Second is, do you have the time to manage the business? So franchising isn't investing in a condo. As I mentioned a while ago, you do need the time to manage it. Um, you can do it remotely if needed, but then you need a local partner here to check up on the store. Then are you able to follow the systems? This is very critical. You're paying franchise fees, you're paying uh, different royalties. 
for the system that they've developed, make sure you're able to follow the systems. Can you find locations? Um, are you able to find a good location? And of course, the beauty here is some franchisors do help you with that. Um, and, and do you have the experience in leading people or, or managing customers? It doesn't mean you, have, you should have run a business before, but make sure you have at least that experience in leading people, managing customers, because whatever business you get in any field, these are still, these are going to be critical, critical, um, critical endeavors and critical skills. That's the last slide for me. Um, and, and of course, I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions. Feel free to drop it in the Q&A section and, and I'll, we'll start answering it, but we'll have a Q&A part later as well. But if you did have more questions as well, you could contact the Philippine Franchise Association, or you could also contact you franchise uh, to, to, to get a free franchise matching consultation. It's on franchising at ufranchiseasia.com. Um, and, and we'll have a bit more uh, a presentation of some of the brands after this. But with that, I, I wanted to thank you um, for spending this, this afternoon, this, this evening with us, um, and, and, and hope you have a good, good luck in your franchise journey. Thank you, Chris. Um, as Chris mentioned, uh, you may wish to uh, place your questions in the Q&A box or the chat box. And then when you leave your questions, can you please put your name, email address, mobile number, and brand you're interested in so that um, each particular brand can get back to you. Um, we can also send a copy of the presentation slides after this uh, through your same uh, email addresses that you would provide. Now, um, we are now going to specific um, brand presentations, starting with you franchise to be given by their marketing manager, Ms. Vel Chacha. Vel, please. Hello, good day to all our participants. And I'm Vel, again, marketing manager of U Franchise Sales and Management. And today I'm here to present to you top franchise brands that are on the upswing this time. So, but just to quickly introduce our company, uh, U Franchise is a franchise sales company that helps aspiring franchisees be matched uh, with the right franchise brand to invest in. So currently we have uh, over 200 plus franchise brands to match you with. And with that, we offer to you our franchise matching consultation for free. So, um, and also we have some premium services like location hunting to fast track your franchise application. And as mentioned a while ago that um, as Chris said, you actually have to, um, shortlist brands that are members of the PFA or developed by Franco Philippines. And we're very proud to say that 95% of the brands that we are partner, partnered with are actually members of the PFA and or uh, developed by Franco. So for our brands, uh, please, uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so for our brands, um, we see that the strength of the essential business concepts are on the rise and will continue to grow. So this is how we selected and clustered the brands that I'll be presenting to you today. So these are just a few of the brands that we actually have. So here are some of the brands that caters to the essential needs of the customers. If we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So for number one, essential businesses um, under necessities, there will be continuing demand for drinking water, laundry services, micro lending or loans and LPG. And uh, before I continue with the brands, uh, let, may I just say that our franchise packages that I'll be presenting to you today would start at, some will start at 300,000 pesos and up. So here you are guided at the screen with the amount of the franchise investments. So number one for necessities is H2O Mineral Plus. It's an alkaline water refilling brand from Singapore with a very compact setup, best for small spaces, even starting at seven square meters. The franchise starts at 6,500 USD. Save Five Laundromat is one of our um, fast growing self-service laundry um, concepts at the moment and with most people working from home and the growing size of households uh, without enough space for laundry is growing 
the clamor for laundromat service continued to grow. So Save 5 has accommodated more customers by allowing drop-off and pick-up and delivery service for select branches. It's a very affordable franchise for a laundry service starting at 36,000 USD. We also have for an LPG concept, it's Brent Gas, and we have seen that LPG gas consumption stays interrupted and more customers are looking for more affordable LPG centers near them. Um, so franchise Brent Gas starting at 13,700 USD. So for our next um, cluster, if we can go to the next slide, um, we focus on health is wealth. So health and wellness will always be a top priority, especially um, as we um, look for more ways to sur survive and sustain our living in this uh, pandemic. The generics pharmacy is one of the, actually the one of the largest pharmacy in the country today, and customers need access to cheap and affordable medicines. And according to TGP, they still have about 2,000 potential locations to open, and most of it are in provincial areas. So if you have relatives here in the Philippines who are in the provinces, um, it's, very, it's a very good time to um, look at Generics Pharmacy as your franchise investment. Be sure to have a location in mind if you will franchise TGP and uh, the franchise starts at 15,000 USD. We also have under health is wealth is the Citro Zone um, beverage lemonade uh, uh, cart franchise brand because people are really leaning towards um, healthier lifestyle, boosting our immune system more. Citro Zone continued operation through online orders and deliveries and allow their franchises to actually sell some of their stocks as well, no? Um, or their fruits in retail and even waive royalties to help them stabilize um, during the quarantine period. The franchise starts at 5,700 USD. Next slide, please. The next cluster that I'll be presenting to you are brands that have delivery and to-go food because we've seen, uh, we, we see that the demand for um, delivery and to-go food will continue to grow with social distancing. So here are the brands that we have um, identified with very strong delivery system and um, very viable for non-mall locations. Number one is Shawarma Shack. It's the original buy one, take one shawarma. It's a very simple on-the-go snack. Now they also have their internal delivery system and their franchise starts at 16,700 USD. Also we have at the pizza concept is Angel's Pizza under figure group. Um, we've, they said that there are over 80% um, of sales from delivery and takeout before ECQ and now they are aggressively expanding to reach more territories. So the franchise starts at 118,000 USD. Also, um, here um, is Bread Stop. It's a staple food, a neighborhood bakery at very mass market prices. So it's very ideal for non-mall locations like terminals, marketplaces, and more. It's a very affordable franchise as well, starting at 9,800 USD. And last is with us, also is um, Chat Time. And even prior to ECQ, um, seen that milk tea has been a top item at delivery apps here in the Philippines and it continues to be one until now. Chat Time is also looking for more outside mall locations to reach more territories through deliveries. The franchise starts at 7, 79,000 USD. So these are just um, these brands are just a few of the many brands that we can match or introduce you with if you're really interested in getting into a franchise. So let us help you find the right franchise for you on our free franchise matching consultation. If we can go to the next slide, please. So please uh, feel free to reach out to any of our, um, to, to us to get a free one-on-one -on -one consultation and to ask questions about specific brands and or in franchising in general. You may contact us at the contact numbers presented at your screen. We have Philippine numbers and US numbers there. So thank you and we look forward to helping you start your franchise journey. This is Val again from New Franchise. Thanks. Thank you, Val. Now um, for our next presenter um, for Potato Corner, May I call on the General Manager for International Markets Group, Ms. Katrina G. Manado. Kat, please. 
Hi, good morning everyone. Good afternoon to our partners in the U.S. I'm Katrina and I'm the general manager for Potato Corner. I'm handling the international expansion of the brand. Next slide, please. I'll walk you through the brand overview of Potato Corner. So we started Potato Corner in 1992. And uh, the second store that we have is already a franchise store. That's how entrepreneurial the, the, the company is. And as mentioned a while ago by Chris and Ms. Bing, we are an esteemed partner of the PFA. And we've also expanded our global footprint for the past 27 years. So we have stores in Indonesia, USA, Australia, Thailand, Panama, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Cambodia. Just last year, we've opened up the territories in Canada, in Edmonton specifically. We have a, we have a store in Myanmar and also stores in Saudi Arabia. So this is actually more of a history of what a Potato Corner is. And it shows how 27 years of franchising experience uh, brings to the table. Also, we are a global f and player. We have very strong organizational skills to support this extensive franchise network. As of date, we have over 1,152 stores in the Philippines. We have 242 stores in international. Next slide, please. Currently, we have different franchise packages that is being offered for Potato Corner. We have a school card, we have a standard card, and also a customized card. So uh, the good thing about this year is uh, we are going to waive the franchise fees for all of these brands. Also, we've diversified our portfolio to include different uh, snacking options. So this includes Dynasty, this is a milk tea brand. Cabs, this is a shawarma brand. Gotogo, this is a, it's like a lugao, it's like congee. And also Boss Chicken. So this is like uh, a chicken and rice meal. Next slide, please. So as mentioned a while ago, we have a PC starter kit. So it, this will be free franchise fee for uh, the whole duration. So the turnkey package starts at 95,000 pesos. So the inclusion would be this uh, special events card. This will be used for four months. So meaning the turnkey package is more of like a trial package for those who would like to try it out as an entrepreneur. So after four months, you can actually have uh, the plan to es uh, escalate into a, uh, a more uh, defined store format that you would like. So the 95,000 would cover uh, leasing, site assessment assistance, human resource training, onboarding, marketing support, operations, and also new product development. Uh, as we all know right now, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is how diverse Potato Corner is. Uh, you know Potato Corner as being a, a French fries company. Uh, right now, uh, we are launching new products in our menu, which includes uh, popcorn and also chicken. So we are actually uh, moving forward into the snacking, uh, snacking space and actually moving toward the meal replacement already. Next slide, please. So why Potato Corner? Uh, there are three items why you would choose us as a partner. Number one, we are a global, agile, and innovative company. Uh, we have been in the industry for the past 27 years. We have 1,300 franchise, uh, franchises in the global and, and uh, local market. We have innovative products. We have an extensive R&D. We are very agile. We quickly adopt to the requirements of the, the environment. Like right now, we understand that there are a lot of entrepreneurs who would like to invest in the right franchise and we are waiving the franchise fee for them to just try it out and uh, be partners with Potato Corner. Next. Strong franchise support. Uh, we have a very strong team to handle uh, the different franchises uh, here and abroad. Uh, we have very qualified uh, team supervisors that handles uh, the different quality management and operational support that we are providing our partners. Next. Track record and ease of operations. As mentioned, we are 27 years in the franchising business and uh, ease of operations. Uh, this is very easy. Flavors and fries, uh, 
you can never go wrong. And of course, potato corner is a universal snack. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you. That ends my presentation. And we want to be your partner. My email is katrina.manalotpotatocorner.com. My mobile is 0917-706-0407. You can drop me an email uh, and let we can discuss further. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. And uh, for our third presenter, um, for Mr. Donut, may I call on the franchise manager, Ms. Cheryl Carino. Cheryl, please. Hello. Good morning to everyone who, has, who are tuned in here in the Philippines and good afternoon and good evening to our um, special guests uh, today for our Trabaho Negosyo and Kabuhayan program. So uh, I'm Che Carino, the Senior Franchising Manager of Mr. Donut, as mentioned by Sir Eric, and I'm here to give you some information about the business that Mr. Donut offers for all of you. Right. Next, please. Right. So, here are just uh, some quick facts about Mr. Donut. So, as known to you, Mr. Donut is an international brand. We are founded 1955 in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, in Asia, we are present in Japan, Thailand, Taiwan, and Indonesia. In 1982, Duskin Company, the, the mother franchisor of Mr. Donut, who is based in Japan, brought Mr. Donut here in the Philippines. And I'm proud to say that the uh, the first franchise brand uh, brought is still operational and it's located in Binyan, Laguna. So for those who uh, would like to know, uh, Mr. Donut uh, here in the Philippines is being operated by the Ram Car Food Group, the same company who is behind KFC and uh, Tokyo Tokyo. Next, please. All right. So 37 years uh, strong, 1982. That was when we first came here in the Philippines. So uh, after 37 years, we are now operating more than 700 franchise shops. Of course, a couple of company owned, that's 2,000. 3,000 key accounts. You can also find Mr. Donut in 7-Eleven um, and some petroleum uh, partners. And our plants are strateg strategically located in 20 provinces. Okay. Which brings us to the advantage of why uh, is it good to choose Mr. Donut? Okay. So first, of course, we're well known here in the Philippines and also in some parts of Asia, and we are already an established brand. As mentioned, we have been operating in 37 years already. So uh, the brand is a survivor brand, if I may say, having surpassed several economic challenges. Uh, a, a couple of calamities has, has hit the country, and then Mr. Donut shops are still there. And of course, the different competitors. But the brand has come strong. Um, and it's still continuing to invite people who would like to invest for Mr. Donut. We are also considered as an essential brand. So not known, uh, of course, it's, uh, everyone is well aware that uh, two months ago, Philippines was declared under ACQ. So all the businesses have closed. However, being part of the essential franchise, our franchisees and our shops have reopened even during the ACQ or the lockdown. Okay, so what they do, the third bullet, adaptive and scalable business model, because we have that. Um, the usual brick and mortar store was converted to an online store. So our franchisees were able to cater to online orders and were able to uh, deploy delivery personnel so that the favorite donuts of the Filipinos will be brought to their homes. Okay. Uh, we also guarantee a gar uh, product profit. So as a while ago, Chris, Lynn, the CEO, CEO no, of Brand Corp mentioned that um, franchising is a very good uh, and it is a very good venture because it allows you to uh, earn profit. At Mr. Donut, um, there is a guaranteed product profit. That's why uh, we can assist you in computing uh, for the income that you would like to earn, and of course, guide you on how you'll be able to achieve that net income. Of course, we also have continuing business support once you sign up for us as a franchise. Next, please. All right. Here, are, here on the screen, you're seeing the regular franchise package that we offer. So in US dollars, that's as low as 6,000 uh, pesos. Okay. It's inclusive already of franchise fees. So you will see there are different concepts, and each concept has a specific product that can be offered depending on the size. Next, please. 
All right. So what you're seeing now is what we call the business trial package. So we have uh, two objectives we're offering. First, this is for the first time uh, entrepreneurs or those who are first uh, timers when it comes to running a business or venturing into a business. So uh, that's 99,000 pesos. Okay, so that's roughly around $2,000. So as you can see on the screen, okay, so we have 50,000 50, of that 99,000 pesos is refundable. Okay, and uh, for the rest, the 49,000, you'll be, you will be, <coughs> you will be using that, of course, as you start your business with Mr. Luna. Okay, so after three months, three to six months of business trial, what we're going to do is to assess if the business is feasible on your chosen location and convert it to a regular package. This will also be a good opportunity as you pursue your study uh, when it comes to business because you'll be able to get a first-hand feel of how to run a Mr. Donut business. And uh, after three months or after six months, be able to assess, is this the, is this the business that I would like to grow? Uh, because after six months, or three months of operations no, after assessment, you'll be signing in a long-term contract, which is about three years. Next, please. All right. So you will be able to see on the screen the different support that we provide our franchisees while they are running their business with Mr. Donut. So in terms of operations or handling the shop, uh, there will be regular business consultations and quarterly, of course, business review so that we will see the profit level that you are earning. We also have a dedicated uh, help desk. This is a sort of a uh, customer hotline for our franchisees. And of course, we provide rewards and recognition for them. In terms of marketing, we have continuous ads and promos. And we help the franchisees develop local store marketing that is fit for their market. For training, we have a training app that uh, is downloadable to Android and iPhone phones of our franchisees and team members so that after their training, they can they have a ready reference for uh, processes and procedures that we have in the stores. And of course, uh, we continuously innovate our product and launch uh, new products from uh, at least four times in a year. All right, next please. Okay, so I guess um, as you do uh, your research on the business that uh, you would like to venture in, okay, so I guess the words that I will be leaving to you is that uh, here at Mr. Donut, given our uh, proven track in terms of uh, handling our franchisees and in terms of running a franchise store, uh, we would like to assure you that as a franchisor, of course, we put much consideration, we mind the business of our franchisees, uh, because we really feel a, a strong sense of duty uh, for all the businesses that our franchisees open. So, next, next please. All right. So, with that, I would like to leave you our contact details. So, if you would like to know more about our business or if you would like to apply and try our packages, please email fms at mrdonut.ph. Okay. So, that would be our first touch point. You can also get in touch with U Franchise because we are also part or we are also member of the U Franchise group. Um, all right. And I will also later on chat or type in uh, my email so that you can also get in touch with me. Okay, so that would be all. So uh, I hope uh, to be able to, uh, and I, that you will be able to consider Mr. Donut for your business. And I look forward to uh, seeing you open your store here in the Philippines. Morning. Thank you, Cheryl. And Thank you, for, Eric. Yes, and for our um, last but certainly not the least uh, presentation from Quicklean, may I call on the franchise sales manager, Miss Jen Sagadraka. Jen, please. Hey everyone, this is Jen Sagadraka from Quicklean Laundry Philippines, and I will be presenting to you everything that you need to know in setting up a Quick Clean franchise branch. Quick Clean is the laundry, Quick Clean Laundry is the first and the largest self-service laundromat chain in the Philippines. We are a one-stop shop on all your laundry needs. We are behind the many washers and dryers and finishing machines installed in every hotel, hospitals, and large garment industries here in the Philippines. So we are 
ensuring that all installed equipment are maintained and operated. Mm -hmm. So one day, a little story behind our start. Um, <coughs> one day, back in 20, Matthew Hernandez thought, of why not make these top caliber washers and dryers be made available to mass market? Filipino people will surely benefit on this. Hence, the vended laundromats. And one of those is Quickly. Quickly is a high-end, a high-tiered self-service laundromat. When you come to do your laundry, it is a, it has a cozy feel next to home ambience with um, relaxed and playful feel. So it's a usually well maintained with play, uh, marketing collaterals inside. In, um, of course, powered by top of the line speed clean machines. Some shops even have co um, coffee shops incorporated inside. Couches instead of regular chairs are provided for added comfortability and usually shops are air conditioned stores. Currently, um, kindly move to the next slide, please. Thank you. Currently, we are offering the franchise for 300,000 plus fat. So around 336,000 pesos or 6,600 US dollars. It includes technical site visit, meaning we are sending team of surveyor and architects to check the technical soundness of your shop. This is the time that we check the electrical capacity, type and requirement for upgrade, water pressure, and as you know it, even the slightest change of water pressure can affect the performance of an industrial laundry equipment. We also check mechanical needs such as air intake and exhaust. That way, we can come up with the most efficient working plans or blueprints for your shop. There's a lot more technical considerations that a quick clean franchise owner should be checking. This is actually most laundromats right now are missing. Um, the thorough evaluation and the capacity of each shops and that would make your um, expensive equipments run longer and therefore servicing your customers better. The contract runs for six years. Quarterly audits being made to ensure that quality service and reliability is always at its best. Every year we gather for the last quarter to do franchise summit. Here we sit down, collaborate, and discuss challenges, best practices, improvement for each other of each other as business partners. Also included in the franchise we going back after the tech site visit is a training of your people. Your candidates make ensuring that the operations manual are being passed on firsthand to our frontliners. We call them clean consultants with a K. Um, clean with a K is part of our branding. So sample visibility also is included. Um, we wanted to show you how financials would look like. Well, 60%, like what I've mentioned a while ago, 60% of your investment would go to your equipment, meaning washers and dryers and the payment system. We have clean cards like this. And 90% of the shop are equipped with this technology. This makes your shop actually automated. This is being loaded with cash inside the store using the quick pay terminal installed inside your shop. In the event that you opted to have this, um, because we also have POS, um, coin op, System available, uh, these kind of systems available as well. This is also a, actually a, will cut off a big chunk on your initial investment. So if you want, you can start with a coin up first and then later on upgrade with this. We will discuss more about this. If you would be interested, um, we are available for one on one business coaching as well via Zoom, Cisco, Google, Google teleconferences. So going back, like what I've mentioned a while ago, you're a one-stop shop for all your laundry needs, meaning we can give you end-to-end -end support in planning, building, maintaining, co-marketing, and in the event of early ROI, you may want to branch out fast. This is what usually happens in most of our franchise partners. So some of them, over the span of four years, 
you are able to open five more shops. So let's move on discussing the Laba Vento. Can we go back to the other slide, please? Thank you. Um, there are just two things. Number one is a target market. Maybe you'd be asking what's the difference with Quickly. So relatively, it's a self-service laundromat as well, but this time it focuses on the market CDE, meaning students and the likes. This branded shop is reaching out to mass market. Customers who are here usually on the go and most of the vendor shops are smaller and located in the midst of the crowded town area bus hubs, strike hubs, etc. It has a tagline of Paboritong Laundromat ng Bayan or the People's Laundromat of Choice or the Laundromat of the People. It also coined La Barcada. So the next, the next thing about it is it's like a quick clean laundromat starter kit, so to speak. Unlike quick clean, which is heavy on branding and marketing standards, this one you can tailor fit it and you can play with it. Labo vendor shops usually is not air conditioned. It's one of an alfresco setup. It's basically open for everybody. Right now, we're offering it free franchise fee. Um, that's around 200,000 pesos before. No royalty fee and no advertisement fee. Aside from that, we are offering 0% interest rate for all the equipment you would prefer to have in your store. If you want to know more about this, please reach out to us. Let's talk. Also, in the event that you're planning to invest in less than a million uh, pesos, we have our packages for that. You can even purchase your home and your home use laundry equipment. Please see all the details in the screen. Can you move to the next slide, please? Okay, to share a little post-pandemic, um, what we did is uh, we follow all the government mandated, mandated rules and then we supported them by being their uh, laundry provider. Actually, we're partnered with the government, the OCD, Office of Civil Defense, and um, the BCDA, wherein uh, PUIs, frontliners, and PUMs are being held or um, in-house. So that's the time we also offer online booking and cashless transactions through all these partners, Possible, Paymaya, uh, WeChat Pay, and the GCash. Next slide, please. Oh, oh also, we offered uh, full service from then on, making sure that every, every customer's needs would be attended to. So in the screen, you can see our details. And thank you for your time, everyone. And thank you so much, PFA, for making Quick Clean Laundry a part of Trabajo, Negocio, Kabuhayan series. Uh, thank you, Jen. Thank you to all our presenters. Um, now we would segue to the Q&A portion. Um, I see a lot of questions coming into the Q&A box and also in the chat box. Um, I think uh, for the first question, uh, Jen touched up a little bit on this um, in terms of post-COVID, uh, what are companies or what are franchisers doing um, after the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So one question is, how are the franchise operators coping with the current COVID-19 situation in the Philippines? So any of the panelists may wish to address that question. Hello, Eric. Allow me to address that question first. Now, for Mr. Donat, even during ECQ, uh, we have started to, uh, to transition our franchises from being boutique and mortar stores into uh, stores with additional uh, sales channels. So they start venturing into online. And now that uh, businesses are starting to reopen here in the, uh, in the Philippines, uh, we are... Uh, we, told them to still maintain that um, online platform. Now, uh, we all know that uh, as we transition to the new normal, sales, of course, will not be uh, as high for some of the stores that we have. So for that uh, matter, we are, working to, for, we are working on some programs that we can uh, incorporate into businesses so that they will have additional 
income streams from Mr. Duna, from selling Mr. Duna. Okay, so uh, that is one of the things that we do to, to assist them. Because um, as, as I mentioned a while ago, we are always looking into their profitability. So it's time that we see that it's on a level that is going below uh, from what is set. Uh, we try to initiate or come up with programs that will help them sell more. So whether it's uh, doing an online thing or whether it's opening an, another income stream for them, so we assist them on that. Thank you very much. Um, just another question from, from one of our friends um, joining Zoom. My friends and I are planning to get a number of franchises. Is housing all products in one location allowed? Uh, I can answer that, Celine. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, I know I've shown you a lot of uh, brands in, in my presentations. We have Potato Corner, we have Gotogo, -Go, we have Boss Chicken, we have Cabs, we have Dynasty. Uh, yes, you can have uh, that concept. It's like a snack stop. So all of those brands can be in one place uh, with a minimal franchise fee. And of course, it's being handled by Potato Corner. Okay, thank you. So do you have a list of franchise that you can recommend for people who live, who live outside the Philippines? So based on your um, interactions with um, our Kababayans, so what are the usual trends when it comes to choices of franchises? Oh, may, maybe I can answer that because we talk to a lot of our, our overseas Filipinos. Um, you know, I, th I think one thing you, you need to look at are businesses that don't require as, as much um, hands-on effort. So, you know, brands like, I think the brands here are very good representation. So self-service laundry, for example, you have one or two staff at any given shift. So it's a bit simpler. I think it's very difficult to run a full-scale restaurant if, if you're remote. But things like Potato Corner, where, you know, you're, you, you have a, a smaller staff requirement. Um, micro lending as well. I, I think the last time we were in the U.S., someone, um, we, we did a roadshow in the U.S. last year. Um, some people also went into micro lending um, because they were able to, to, to do that remote and, and they could maximize technology um, to, to, to manage the business. Thank you, Chris. Uh, just to uh, clarification for everyone, the, because there's a lot of questions on this, the amounts being quoted in US dollars are for franchises in the Philippines. So they already made the calculations in order for our Kababayans here in the U.S. Uh, for, for their convenience. No? Now, um, for the next question, uh, there's one here that says, for food companies and in these times of being health conscious, how do you update your products to be perceived as healthy? Or do you change your recipes? Maybe one of our food brands can, can, uh, I can, can take up that question. Uh, Thank you, Kat. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think French fries is perceived as an unhealthy healthy snack. Oh, so what we are doing is we are offering uh, alternative options. Like we have sweet potato. And uh, we also need to reassess uh, the use of our oil. So it, when it comes to eating healthy, it's really a matter of choice. Because uh, right now, I mean, our, our product is more of an indulgence. But we have alternatives that we can offer our uh, customers. So we have uh, sweet potato fries, which is kind of healthy. Okay. And, and maybe, I can add, maybe I can just add something to that. I think as, as, as the world moves to more health, I think if you look at all the trend studies, though, there is a move to health. As, as more people go into healthy, indulgent foods also goes up. So, so people just go to the extreme of, of some people want healthy, some people want more indulgent. So I think it, it's good. I think important is, is you find the brand that fits the, the lifestyle you want, as well as, you know, fits your target market. Um, so, so you don't also want to just shift everything into healthy because there are still people who do want that indulgence and, and, and snacking side. Um, allow me to also add, okay, 
So, like potato corner, Mr. Donut is a treat, no? It's an indulgent brand. Okay, so it's perceived mostly as sweet, but uh, we are guided by a research and development team wherein um, ingredients or raw materials used are also being fit so that uh, students, especially in schools, with we cater, or we have franchises in schools. No? Schools are very strict when it comes to nutrition. So it's also one of the things that we look at. And um, our bread products have nutrition facts. It's also required. So we can be assured that uh, whether it's a sweet treat or whether it's a healthy bread that we are offering, same with potato corner, uh, the research and development teams have also considered the impact to health of the products that we sell. Okay. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, Sir Nick, you were about to say something? Yes. yes. Uh, I, I'd like to ask, are, are franchise contracts generally transferable? Or are they usually restricted to just uh, the original uh, franchisee and franchisor? Can I sell my contract? Should I decide later on that uh, uh, I, I, this is not the kind of business that uh, I'd like to pursue in the, in the next uh, years? Is there any provision in the usual contract that uh, prevents me from doing so? Yeah, um, maybe I can try to help to answer that. I think in general Please. contracts, um, contracts do have uh, an allowance for reselling. But what you cannot do is just resell without the notification of the franchisor because the franchisor granted you the franchise. So it was given to you. Now, if you want to resell, let's say you have a five-year contract, you still have four years left, and you decided maybe you moved on, you, you had to do other things. Um, you could sell that, but you have to work with the franchisor. The franchisor has a, a right to, to, to purchase that, actually, the, the location, or to, uh, to approve any potential franchisee that maybe you, you want to sell to. Does the, does the, uh, does the franchisee, the, does the franchisor get uh, any of the gain from whatever appreciation in the, the price? Um, typically, no, um, but depends as well. I mean, I, I, I can t t say about the general rule. Um, so no, I think if they approve the franchisee that you want and, and you were able to gain um, from, from what you sold, then that's great. Because for, for a good franchise or what they're looking at, it's not to profit from you selling it. It's to profit from the continuous operation, from the continuous royalty that, that actually um, your, your, your store will generate. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, just to, again, remind uh, our uh, participants, we can share a list of Philippine Franchise Association members who you may wish to you know, contact uh, if you have inquiries. And they also post it in the PFA website. Uh, this is the vetted list of PFA members who um, are current, no, current members of the PFA. Um, we would like to, at this point, we'd just like to um, acknowledge the presence of some of our um, colleagues at the consulates and embassies, particularly our Consul General Adelio Cruz, who is now on hand as well. Okay. Um, and uh, before that, uh, I think there's a question here on uh, what is the legal entity setup that is ideal to each franchise of choice? I think this is for overseas Filipinos who are uh, abroad, obviously, and, and would want to know what legal entity they would need to set up in order to run their business in the Philippines. Um, I, I guess for that, I think it's... it's, it's the, the usual, I, I think either a sole proprietorship or a corporation that they need to register locally in, 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 with DTI locally. Um, typically, a lot of people get into it. They use a corporate um, vehicle, um, especially now that um, to, to, to give them that legal, um, legal prote extra legal protection. But I think they do need to comply with, with, with the normal laws in, in the Philippines. Um, in terms of if they're also American citizens, I, I actually I defer it back to the to, to, to DTI. I'm sure you could advise advise better if there are extra requirements. I think most of the Filipino franchises, uh, pro prospective franchises, are or can be uh, dual citizens. 
so they can get uh, Philippine pa passports um, after and, and require the citizenship and, and have all of the rights and privileges um, um, accorded uh, together with that. Now, um, I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions before we wrap up. Um, there's one here particular to, I think, quickly. Is it not hard to engage in laundromats franchises due to the uncertainty of power and water source, especially in Metro Manila and other cities? Jen? Actually, I'm answering it right now. In okay, the, you want to read it out? Uh, thank you for reaching out to us. Well, due to the situation we're in right now, which is post-COVID, uncertainties like power and water charges surge may be expected. This is inevitable, actually. We just have to cope with it, make sure that margin of services offered are reasonable. Um, after all, comfortability and doing your laundry in an efficient way is something that go beyond price. Okay, thank you, Jen. Um, for my co-panelists, any other questions you may want to address or read out? Well, thank you, Eric. I think we've already exhausted um, most of the questions. Hello, hello, Conjun Adele. Wait, let me unmute you. Hello, Celine. Uh, very nice to see you all here. Eric, thank you for inviting me. Uh, Raymond, nice to see you again. And uh, of course, I'd like to uh, express my uh, uh, greetings to uh, Tita Bing and Chris. Nice to see you and our speakers. Very informative. Um, thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much, Conja and Adele. It's nice to see you too. Um, I know we've committed to our participants at 40NK. We have an hour um, and I think we have very good quality questions. Um, and as promised, our brand, our brands here, including Chris of PFA and Ms. Bing, will continue to reach out to you. Um, those who uh, participated via Zoom, um, you have our contact details. We will be sending you the presentations today. For those who participated, who joined us today via Facebook Live, please do continue to follow. Uh, we are planning another series of PNK, so please do provide us some insights. Ano po ba yung gusto nyo pang malaman? For example, for, for franchises, uh, meron po kayong mga particular brands that you would like to look into, particular set of products, um, and other topics that you would want our PNK sessions to, to help you with. So abangan nyo po yun. We can be reached sa Washington, D.C. You can reach out to the U.S. Uh, Embassy of the Philippines in Washington, D.C. You can reach out to PTIC New York Facebook page. Um, Eric Elnar, PTICLA. And then, of course, the San Francisco uh, Philippine Trade Investment Center in San Francisco. So having said that, perhaps we can do a quick class picture <laughs> before we say... Goodbye and thank you to our friends. Everyone smile. One more. Sorry. And we're set. Again, maraming salamat po. Abangan niyo po ang susunod nating PNK. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Maraming salamat, Miss Bing. Thank you. Chris. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Salamat Thank you. Hi, Gwen Jen. How are you? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, SDR, Nick, uh, Raymond, Eric, and of course, Miss Celine. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Magandang umaga po sa Pilipinas. Salamat <laughs> po. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Yeah, thank you. Okay po. Thank you so much, Good evening. So much. Thank you. Hi, Gwen Jen. How are you? Thank you. Thank you.